Hi everyone, I'm Pinky Daga. I'm the CEO of Thrive Art and Soul and I'm here with Ashika Mehta today. Hi Ashika. Hi Pinky. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're more than welcome. So Ashika is an amazing speaker on the art and the joy of parenting. She's a trained clinical psychologist from Columbia University. She also practices psychotherapy and she does that for individuals and also is a family therapist. Uh, she also does many corporate workshops. That's right? right. That's right. So welcome Ashika. Thank you. Thank you Pinky. So you know today um, we are doing a Mother's Day special. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there and happy Mother's Day to you Ashika. Thank you and to you. Thank you. So as mothers we are often, most mothers have one common phenomena and that is they are all riddled with guilt at some times, at some degrees, to certain different levels. But most of us, guilt is kind of become, has become synonymous with being a good mom. And we're always asking ourselves the question, are we a good enough parent? Are we a good enough mother? Isn't that so, Ashika? And Ashika has introduced me to this concept of how, what is it to be a good enough mother? So Pinky, you know, it's funny that people say, oh, I'm, I'm just not good enough, or am I not good enough? And every time they talk about being good enough, it's associated with guilt. Because I think everyone is in almost in a race to be a perfect parent. You want to do it all. You don't want to miss out on anything. And every time you feel that you can't do it all, you feel like you're falling short of your responsibilities. So I think mothers today are living with a lot of guilt. And it's sad that this concept of good enough has become associated with so much negativity right. or um, inability and incapacity to do your best. Correct. There was actually a pediatrician and psycho psychoanalyst in 1953. His yeah. name was Donald Winnicott. And he came up with this incredible concept of the good enough mother. And he looked at it quite differently, in fact. He said the good enough mother is not a mother who's perfect. Right. Perfection is an illusion because no matter how much you try to do as a parent, your child's demands will grow, they will change. Yes. What your child expects, it's not even humanly possible for a parent and a child to be aligned on those expectations all the yeah, time. Absolutely. So how can anyone be yeah. a perfect parent who does it all the time? So he took the concept of good enough mother and he said a good enough mother is a mother who allows, who is in tune with the child but also is free to make mistakes in her parenting. Right. And there are, it's okay for her to have gaps. Yeah. Now you ask me why is it okay for her to have gaps and what kind of right, gaps? Right, because that is a thing that we all, that's the one thing that we as parents First of all, we're never taught how to be parents, right? That's the one thing that there's no classes for. And then we are always questioning ourselves. We're always doubting ourselves. And that is the one place that we don't want to fail. It's okay, maybe we're okay to fail in other areas of our life, but the one place that we just don't want to fail, we're, like, we're programmed to it. We just don't want to fail as parents. So Pinky, I think for us as mothers to think about it slightly differently becomes important. Right. Your home, your parenting unit is the one place where a child can feel a gap but can still feel love. Right. It's a place where a child can fall and still pick themselves up in a loving, trusting, secure environment. So the parent doesn't have to pander to every single need of the child. Correct. What it actually does when a parent falls short, obviously not in some grossly terrible way like uh, neglect or child abuse, yes, yes. but smaller things like right. If you've forgotten to wrap your child's textbooks, you made a child a promise and you haven't lived up to the promise. Smaller right. things like that. You right. promised a child a trip but some work came up and you can't make the trip. You Correct. were late to pick up your child from school. There are so many small things small that happen. And, yeah, which we and riddle it, ourselves with. And it doesn't mean that when that happens, you have to say, okay, now I'm, I feel so terrible that yeah. I'm going to take my child shopping to the Correct. toy store. You're trying to compensate. Or, or buy my child an ice cream. Yeah. It's okay for the child to 
tolerate that discrepancy right. because that is when the concept of the good enough mother comes. Right. So it's the nurturing mother who makes mistakes and that teaches the child frustration tolerance. It teaches the child resilience. It right. teaches the child to say, how am I going to align my expectations? Because as I become an adult and when I step into the real world, everything is not going to be catered yeah, to my women's exactly. fancy. So you see, even the mother's role as a mother changes through the child's lifespan. When yes. the child is born, the mother tends to its every need. She will sacrifice her sleep, she will sacrifice yes. her food, she will sacrifice her lifestyle, her desire to do things for herself and will constantly be working around the baby schedule. Right. But as the child grows up, it most definitely needs a separation from the mother and independence starts to develop. Right. And resilience needs to start to develop yes. and frustration tolerance needs to start to develop. Right. And you need a mother who's good enough who is taking care of the child's basic needs but is also creating room and making mistakes for frustration tolerance right, to right. develop. So I think mothers really need to give themselves a pat on the back and say I am good enough and I don't need to be perfect because perfection is an illusion that nobody can attain. And mistakes are allowed. And they must happen right. because that is the training ground for your child to face reality and the real life outside that nurturing home. Right. And for him also to know that it's okay to make, for him also, him or her, to make mistakes as well. Absolutely. We become role models for our kids. Right. If we put up this front of always being in control and always being perfect, your child becomes afraid to even voice their own imperfections right. or their yeah. mistakes. They feel like they have to model our behavior right. and live up to an unnatural standard. Right. Now tell me something, I mean, you know, we spoke about the smaller little things like if we can't take a trip or, you know, if you aren't there to pick up your child on time. But, you know, there's so many subtle things at home which you also, as a parent, often try and cover up. Uh, like, for example, if you are having a bad day or you're in a bad mood, right? and you don't want to talk or you're just in that bad mood, you know. Um, what does, do you think that concept extends towards that being a good enough mother? That doesn't mean that this is giving a license for moms to just scream and shout out of turn, but you know what I mean? Most just to definitely, show that Pinky, side. Yeah. it's okay to tell your child that I'm not having a good day. Yeah. I'm feeling frustrated and I need to take some time out to calm down. Correct. So please give me some space. Right. It's okay to show children that you need that because what you're doing is you're also modeling a healthy coping technique. Right, right. Quite exactly. inadvertently right. but very importantly. Yeah, that's, that's so important, you know. Otherwise, they are struggling to put up a front also in front. You know, Absolutely. The and they need to see that mothers and fathers have aspects. They're not perfect. They you know, know. They have their downfalls. They have their limitations. They have their moments when they're not up to it. Right. And that leads me to another question, Ashika. That uh, often, you know, we are also always told or it's always in our mind that our relationship as a husband and wife was, must also appear perfect in front of the children. And I have to break down this myth. Yes. So I have to break you know, down this myth. Children are extremely perceptive. They're born right. with this innate capability that gets censored as they experience life right. and get socially conditioned. Right. But they can tell a child from the time that it's in a mother's womb has a connection to the mother and the father. Right. They can sense how you feel. You don't have to say it, but it's literally like the elephant in the room. Right. Children whose parents have difficult marriages, where parents are fighting, or a parent may be having an affair, or any of these right. situations, right. Yeah. Children know something's not right. They may not know exactly, exactly what, what's right. but they sense it. And if you tell that child that everything is rosy, right. nothing is wrong, wrong, what are you training that child to do? You're training that child to disregard their instincts. Right. And over time, what happens is the child will start getting cut off from their gut feeling, right. which is actually our radar, our sonar, 
and that's the thing we need to tap into even it's, it's, for our own exactly. emotional it's, it's, health right it's our balancing meter it's in the our body. barometer it's you our know? thermometer yeah. it's our yeah, feeling it's thermometer everything. yeah so but as a parent you would often you would a normal parent would struggle with this question right that if there are issues that i'm facing in my marriage and if the marriage isn't perfect how do you even communicate this with the children so i think you know it's also one thing to remember here is that you want to give children age appropriate content right you want to create an atmosphere when no question is wrong correct children should feel free to ask questions right children will often make observations right and when they make those observations for example they might see that you know mama papa don't spend enough time together right. one of the parents is constantly in a bad mood when the other one is around yeah. and they will say it either subtly or directly right. and at the time that they bring up their natural curiosity brings up questions i think they deserve age appropriate honest answers right 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 so it might be for a 4 year old or a 5 year old mama papa sometimes don't agree and you know or they don't get along there are, some, we're not getting along today we had an argument about something right and you can leave it at that and also at that moment i think it becomes important to ask the child how does this make you, you feel? feel that's very important that's extremely yeah. important because yeah. what a lot of children take on an unconscious guilt that they have done something to Wrong. cause the unrest right. and it's important as a parent to clarify that it has nothing to do with the child and it doesn't affect either parents love and regard for the child correct this is a difference between two adults who are capable of resolving it on their own right right so i think those two things become yeah. quite important quite to clarify important. Yeah, to children yeah 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 and also i think it sets an example of their relationships in life because as children grow older they also are struggling to get along with different people at different times you know their peer group their anybody it could be kids in the garden it could be anyone absolutely you know? absolutely and they i think somewhere they need to feel that it's all right there are days when we don't get along or especially if they have fights with people who are their good friends it completely imbalances them absolutely know, because they and haven't children seen need it. to learn yeah. that the happiest families and the most functional families um are actually a rather I, i don't want to say the happiest family yeah. the healthiest emotional families are those families in which discontent and difference of opinion can be expressed correct freely right and in a lot of abundance it doesn't need to be censored people can agree to disagree correct correct so children need to learn that and children also need to learn that you know what just because my mother or my father is in a fragile mood that doesn't mean that i need to censor expressing my discontent or my problems to them right. we need to know that mothers and fathers have the capacity to tolerate their own frustrations and problems and also to hear out their children and tolerate their children's mm -hmm. frustrations. frustrations and problems so it's important for them to know that both can happen right and that diversity difference of opinion is this a regular normal part of life absolutely you're never going to go into life where everyone agrees with you exactly. there will always be difference of opinion and that's healthy and normal yeah. as long as you can accept difference it's very important to right. accept difference children do not need to be mirror images of you they they are their own person correct and they need to be able to express that yeah i mean that's so important for us to keep that in mind you know so if by this new concept of being a good enough mother but not really in search of perfection what would be your few do's to make ourselves feel that okay you know what it doesn't matter we're good enough anyways so what are the absolute do's so one of the absolute do's in this is i think it's a lot of mums who are working mums struggle Especially, with this even yes. more yeah. because their time is divided between their children and their work and i think to really say that you know even if it's one and a half hours one hour that i'm spending with my child let me make it count let me be 
fully present with my child away from distractions no cell phones right. no media no TV let me hear and actually listen to what my child is saying let me ask questions instead of doing most of the talking right and let my let me let me make it child-led the yeah. hour that I'm spending with my child let my child decide the agenda for Correct. that hour and it and doesn't matter what age they are. It doesn't matter what age mm -hmm. they are. This applies to teenagers, it applies to young kids. Kids want to feel like they have efficacy, that they have the ability to direct a situation, right. that they also have an opinion and can control something and direct it. And it's important for parents to give it to them in a healthy, safe environment. Right, right, right. So I would, de that's my number one that's tip your number for one tip. what you should do. Yeah, and uh, from what I gather, I would add to that and say I think the number two is that if you are feeling a little fragile or, or vulnerable, it's okay for you to, you as us as mothers, as parents also to take a time out, it's okay. It's okay to take a time out and to tell your child what right, you're doing, that you're not that, just yeah. ignoring them, yeah. that you're not feeling too good and you need a few minutes or some time to gather your thoughts right. and feel better. Right, absolutely. Yeah. That was just a, an amazing concept and happy Mother's Day again to everyone out there. Happy I Mother's hope, Day. Yeah, and just know that you will always be a good enough mom. Thank you. Thank you.